Welcome to Could It Exist in Real Life, where the likelihood of superheroes fighting giant starfish just increased. In the spring of 1960, the Justice League broke new grounds. It was one of the most well-known superhero teams in the second of three teams in DC alone. The first being the lesser-known Justice Society, which formed many of the all-star comic heroes of the Golden Age, such as Jay Garrick, a.k.a. the first Flash, and Alan Scott, a.k.a. the first Green Lantern, and the third being the Teen Titans. However, the Justice League was more well-known because of the founding members who consisted of the DC Trinity, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, along with heroes such as Barry Allen, a.k.a. the second Flash, Aquaman, and Hal Jordan, the second Green Lantern. The origin goes like so. A major disaster alerts the six who all show up to deal with it, except for Batman and Superman who are busy dealing with their respective duties in their parts of the world. A giant starfish named Star the Conqueror sets out to take over the world, of course, by spreading his minions and controlling the minds of every living creature, the League of course being in his way of the said goal. They of course beat the fish and decide to form a team from now on. Now for the big question. Could the Justice, Justice League, League exist in real life? life? Before we answer it, let's take a look at the League's original members. First we have Batman, a billionaire playboy who moonlights as a vigilante and spreads fear to criminals. Suffice to say, he can exist in real life. His real name is Prince Harry of Wales. I'm not even joking about that. When people hear his name, they think of two things. One is the well-known rowdy prince that has been in the tabloids so many times. And the other thing goes deeper than that. In May of 2005, Harry joined the British Army under the name Officer Cadet Wales, and has even served in the war in Iraq. However, he was never deployed despite his protests. This was out of fear of the Prince's capture. That didn't stop him though, for he went to Canada to train with the other armed officers there, and he was secretly deployed in the Helmand province of Afghanistan. There, he, along with the U.S. and Gurkha troops, helped repel an attack caused by the Taliban. He was the first royal to ever participate in a war since his uncle Prince Andrew flew. Years afterwards, he has been promoted to the rank of captain and is now a helicopter gunner. Captain Wales, as he's called in the military, has returned from Afghanistan this year. But like the Dark Knight, he too made enemies with the Taliban. Zabahullah Mujahid being one of them, claiming that they are using all their power to get rid of him. To further cement his status as the real Batman, a quote from Batman Begins should be let known from Carmani Falcone. You're Bruce Wayne, the Prince of Gotham. You'd have to go a thousand miles to meet someone who doesn't know your name. Yes, it was a figure of speech in Wayne's case, but it fits in the case of Harry. The party animal personality has always been a mask. His real face is the one they now fear in the darkest parts of the Middle East. Next we have Superman, an alien with the powers of a god sent to Earth from a dying world to save us from a similar fate. Unfortunately, this one is a yes and no. There is no being that until proven otherwise, there are no humanoid aliens on Earth, nor do they have similar powers as Superman. However, there is still a yes in the matter. Many selfless, courageous people have often come close to being the kind of person Superman is. In fact, when I googled the term realized Superman, one always shows up more frequently than the most. Christopher Reeve. For those who don't know, Christopher Reeve was the actor who had played Superman in four movies. He showed that if you were a good enough actor, you could play a double role well enough. In his case being Superman and Clark Kent. Many people to this day still think that they are played by two actors. Unfortunately, Reeve didn't last too long. In 1995, during a horse riding accident, Reeve became quadriplegic. However, he refused to give up on his life, and he continued acting from the remake of Rear Window to his notable guest appearances on Smallville, where he personally passed the torch to another Superman actor, Tom Welling. Reeve also spent the rest of his life researching spinal cord injury in hopes that he, along with others in his situation, would be able to walk again. He was even able to regain most of his body control, starting with his finger. Unfortunately, it was too late, for he died of a pressure wound in 2004. However, much like the Man of Steel, his legacy lived on, in more ways than once. His kids, Matthew and Alexandra Reeve, are now the board of directors of the Christopher and Daniel Reeve Foundation. 
Even Superman himself paid his respects in the form of a comic I still have yet to find. For anything on Wonder Woman, either refer to the article I've written about her, or wait until I do a re-recording of that article. You won't be disappointed either way. Then there is Green Lantern, a soldier who is given a ring by a dying alien. This ring gives him the ability to create constructs using nothing but his willpower and imagination. He also becomes the first human to join the Green Lantern Corps, an intergalactic police force. Now, the ring does not exist yet. However, the willpower it represents does. It's the thing that drives a person to do feats that they never knew they could. As for the Corps and Hal's uniqueness being the first of his race to join it, it's a concept that's been long been forgotten for centuries. Many wars now, you would have to be a citizen of your own country to join the respective army. However, since long before World War I, it did not matter if you were American, English, Canadian, or whatever race. If you were willing to fight, you could join an army of your choice. So long as you're of legal age, but hell, some people lie about their age to join the army anyway. <laughs> the War of 1812, for example had British loyalists who accepted native troops which helped them win in the end. Martian Manhunter is another can of worms. He's the last Martian of a thought dead world who leads a double life as a human cop. He could exist in real life but not in the way you think. Over the years science has proven the existence of bacterial life on Mars. Many scientists have often debated whether or not life on Earth have similarly evolved from bacteria as well. Odds are that John Jones had lived and the rest of his race, rather than dying, devolved into the bacterial mix from once they came. Last but not least, there's Aquaman. He could exist, but this is a yes and no. The reason being is that take away the fact that he's a mythological merman. In order to prove he exists, you have to prove that Atlantis, the lost sunken island, exists as well. As Aquaman, when he's not moonlighting as a superhero, is the king of said domain. Now for the best part. The Justice League itself is a group. It can exist. In Seattle, Washington, there exists a group comprised of ten people that go around the streets of Rain City to stop crime wherever they go. They are known as the Rain City Superhero Movement. Among them is Buster Doe, Red Dragon, and Phoenix Jones. When I first heard about this group, I was a little skeptical at first. However, after hearing all they accomplished, I was in pure awe. However, my awe aside, I do not encourage anybody reading or listening to this to do as they do. These guys are risking both jail time as well as their lives fighting crime in their city, and while it's meant to inspire people, even they point out that the group does it so no one else has to. As usual, debate, argue, let me know if I missed anything. Stay tuned for more.